Cari amici sportivi, welcome to uh, yet another edition of uh, Red Card Weekly. Here where we mostly speak about the Serie A, some Champions League, sometimes some International, and now some MLS. And yes, well, we're not professionals, nor do we pretend to be. I'd like uh, to, yes, it's still three amigos here uh, once again. Guys, but honestly, I hear the cars. Yeah, that's okay. This is live from France. Uh -huh. It's a 6,000 okay. feet square uh, uh, penthouse. We don't have a budget for this. Oh, okay, okay. We, don't know, we don't have a budget. Um, first to my right, I have Steve. So Juventus wins another Scudetto, and that's just fine. But please tell me, how are you at 31 and I'm at 29? Bolillo? I have, to my left, Francis. On Sunday, I was really happy to see we actually got a penalty. But five minutes later, I knew I was going to need so much more therapy. Colo Giacomo? <laughs> and I am Vince. Nel Milan ci stanno tante gioielli. Ma meno male che ci sta tu, Mario Pallotello. Welcome, guys. Uh, before we start, did you finish your chores? Did, did you did you did yes, wash I the dishes? the house. My wife told me. I just cleaned the and house, make sure friends don't make a mess. It's okay. We're okay. Should I yell at us? Or or it's fine. Okay. All right. So uh, let's try to uh, get this through. Uh, what do we got over here? Obviously, we're to start the show. We finally have an official champion. Juventus wins the Scudetto. We we second in a, a we second in a row. We got a clap. We have to clap. <laughs> guys, deserve winners because they are by far the best team in Italy. Yeah, because that's that's only I'm gonna give you. Yeah. All right. That, that's enough. That's enough. They are the best team in Italy. They're the deepest. Uh, they have so many options, even with guys, we said it uh, everywhere, on the newspapers, on the internet, everybody was always saying they're missing that top striker. In the Serie A, we, they just proved it two years in a row, without a top striker, they won two years in a row. So that's how deep they were, they got goals from uh, everybody, Linchensteiner, Vidal, uh, Marquisio, Jack Carinaldinho. <laughs> Matri, Quagliarella, but they actually scored Vucinic, so... Even though we were making fun all year, like in all these dubious calls at the beginning of the year about the referees, but in the end, it was it was a merited Scudetto, they no, they really didn't have a true... Napoli had a chance, Napoli had a chance throughout the year, that, but they didn't capitalize on a couple of games. And before we go on, yes people, these are Italian wine glasses, we don't drink it in the... And yes, this is a zucchini. Don't ask me why there's a zucchini on the table, but there is a zucchini on the table. That's for my wife later on. Oh, for the kitchen. For the oh, okay, kitchen. for the kitchen. Okay, good. Guys, yes, Juve were the best team. It was a year that a lot of teams in Italy were in transition. But again, I have to mention, guys, they got a soft penalty call. I'm it, just it saying these things that up, but yes, by far they were the best team. It was, it, a it was a 50 50 call because there was a push in the back, Francis. It's a. Uh, it's you know what it, it, I think we're looking at it away because Palermo was playing an okay game. Okay, yeah. You know they weren't playing, but they were holding the back line. They were doing what they had to do, and then that unfortunate push. It was a 50-50 call, and I went there. What, what do you want to do? All right, and I just want to say, Juve again with this three-five-one-one guys. Conte better start thinking about another lineup because this is not working. And even Marquisio in the hole. He already said, I do not enjoy playing there, yet Conte tries that system again. Is there more to come? He, he looks like he thinks he discovered something. But realistically, in the last month, you hasn't been playing great soccer. Yes, they do get the results. Yes, they have the advantage of the games. They're not dominating, creating loads of chances. And they're not playing great soccer. So, for next year, he has to find another solution. You need a plan B, uh, Steve. No, you need a, you need a second... Uh, formation, somebody gets served, what do, you, what do you think? This formation from the beginning, he said he created it to include Pogba in the, the starting lineup, but unfortunately by creating this formation, it causes guys like Marquisio and Vidal to be almost inexistent for the for almost the whole game. Guys, against Palermo, it wasn't an exciting game at all. No. It's like we were watching it, because we're used to watching it every uh, Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. on Rai Internacional, because it's the only channel that we have. And uh, what happens? They win, yes, and again, they get the three points, but that they've had a lot of ugly wins like that. This formation, unfortunately, in Europe, it was proven, it's not going to work. work. You need a, pro a prolific striker, someone who is uh, villainous in front of the net and he will be able to score. Vucinic, yes, he's a very good uh, person, uh, he's a very good striker to support him. For someone else, they need that someone else, and Loriente is not the answer. And I just want to finish. Yes, you won, 
one will descend, now they have the sign 31, 31. You know what, I hope you they want to school that to next year so they'll have the third star and they won't have to pretend 32, 33 every time they win. Yes? We agree on that? You're very bitter, aren't you? I just, like, get well, over it! Milan, Milan has, get over it! Milan has 72 Scudettos. I figure, I, oh, I call Sima, go, if they have 31, we can have 72. No, everybody's making up their own... Uh... I don't want to get into the debates. <laughs> and now, my frustration of the week. No, I'm not an anti-Milanista, but you know what pisses me off? We all know the result of Fiorentina, which Did we'll get to after. Did he just say he's not an anti-Milanista? No, he's an anti-Milanista. And he I, says, no, I'll right. say, I can't stand you, but me likes how I can't stand, I don't cheer them, but whatever. You know, I don't hate them with a passion. But, no, we saw the Fiorentina result, like I said, we'll get to that game. Milan plays a horrible game, Torino should have won. Yep. Cerci killed that defense, Abbiati came through, yet Milan comes with a result. Balotelli again, scores late in the game, and Milan gets the three points. To me, Milan does not deserve that third spot. Somehow, everything's been going their way this year. We're gonna talk about conspiracies again? I'm not talking, I'm not, this we is not to conspiracies, the, conspiracies played, it's just... We played horribly. I will admit that. Boatang was awful. Forget Boatang, everybody, even El Sharawi, I'm sorry, I love you, El Faraone, but you were awful, you were very, very bad, and... We just couldn't find you. We had a couple of chances, don't get me wrong, but... Every single time we had a cross in the box, Steve, I don't think there was one that actually landed inside the box. Constant going into the second level of San Siro over there. Uh, the, uh, Abate, the only thing you're good for is running. And guys, yeah, you could get away with this against Torino. But uh, I know we went through a high, you know. Now we're going back. Obviously, that's... Like, yeah, but you're still getting the result, Vince. That's, that's what... But we did, we did a result against a team like Torino. You're telling me if we were playing Napoli... Uh, every it? week you're getting the result. That's it. Can you to me, I'm surprised. I mean, no, Milan's not playing soccer to deserve a third spot uh, in that championship. But we didn't yeah. get a penalty, so what kind of conspiracy? I'm, just saying, I'm not saying conspiracy. I'm just saying everything this year is going your way. Yes. Like it didn't Maybe. go in our uh, in our favor at the beginning of the season. Nobody remembers that. Huh? We're gonna end up again getting this third spot. I have a feeling that just it was too good to be true. Fiorentina dominated Roma and and lost. Milan played a terrible, terrible game. I tried to stream it, and I, at a certain point, I was getting so agitated that I, I ended up closing it. I'm not going to go again with this uh, against Allegri, but I have no choice. Guys, against Torino, did you see the midfield that he, that he fielded? Flamini, we had uh, Nocerino, and, and Montalivio. Montal. Yes, Montalivio was, was injured. Against Torino, he feels this midfield. Then, in a game against Napoli, he says, which is a couple of weeks back, he says, El Sharao is tired, I'm not going to feel them against Napoli. Guys, yeah, just, the thing is, it's pretty obvious now, Allegri has a coaching style that does not fit Milan's DNA. Milan always played good, attractive soccer, yes, solid defensively, but still, they were organized going forward, creative. Allegri doesn't fit Milan. It's not complicated. Allegri has to be out. He doesn't fit. He doesn't fit Milan. Yes, we're critical of him, but we need to look at the other way. Is that what he's been able to accomplish within his stupidity of whatever he does? We're still in third spot. In third yeah, at, at a certain point, Vince, uh, it's gonna end up catching up to him. I know. That's why we're gonna get rid of him. That's what I get rid of him. That's what happened else. at the beginning of the year. He was not prepared with the players that he lost. He was almost shell-shocked at what he was left with with a formation and with some divine intervention of, mir uh, of a miracle from who, if you want to call him God, we're going to call him God El Sharawi scored 16 goals plus, and he hasn't scored since wait, wait, plus he got the gift of Balotelli for the first time in history, a team accepted to get installment payments it was never done before, this is something else that I'm just saying Everything went Milan's way. Are you just bitter because nothing has been going your way? Yeah, absolutely. Because it seems like Milan and Ita have been at two opposite, like totally opposite at the of the beginning of the year. Look at us, Milan, ha ha. But yeah, Milan no. cannot beat Inter. This is my whole point. Four games in a row. All right, Fiorentina against Roma. First half, surprisingly, both teams were very well organized defensively. Second half, Fiorentina picked up a notch. And they played some really, really good soccer, oh, yeah. yet they lose the, uh, uh, the, one, the one against Francis. I'm watching the game, and Roma was in their, in their, on their, in their half 
for at least a good 10 minute stream. They didn't come out of that. And I'm looking, I see one post. Who did the post? It was uh, Jovetic, Pizarro. Pizarro. Okay. What a shot by Pizarro. And I'm, and all of a sudden, you know the whole laws of football, the way things go most of the time. And as soon as I saw that corner, I go, please, please don't tell me because Fiorentina did not. No, no, no. You were cheering for Roma to beat Fiorentina. No, I was, cheering, I was cheering. And for it's Roma. normal. I, like I was cheering for Roma. I was cheering, but it was. <clears throat> I will still admit, Fiorentina merited to win this game, hands down. But we're going to go back to, again, what we keep on saying is that, yes, there's chances, there's posts, there's this, but you need to finish those chances. And there was the De Rossi handball, but you can't, you can't say, well, we lost because of the handball. Well, but it didn't help. I mean, Vince, that was a blatant, I'm sorry, De Rossi. They all a lot of teams would have gotten that, that call. That would have got a red card. That, that's a Maybe not card. a red card, but a penalty. For a periods of time, Rome had almost 11 people behind them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Extended periods of time. It's unbelievable. And again, Fiorentina. Jovetic, a little bit of dip in form. We haven't seen him on the score sheet in a while. Is he thinking of moving uh, away from Fiorentina and maybe the concentration's not there? They haven't been getting goals from their usual guys. This week... Uh, uh, Lajic played well this week. Lajic played well, yeah. well, but he didn't, he didn't show up on the score sheet. Unfortunately, playing well sometimes doesn't get you the three points. And, and Milan is a complete... Example of that. And he bickered at the referee and you got, uh, you got two games. Well, All right. Two games. We have to acknowledge a fantastic performance this week. Miroslav Trose, five goals. Five goals. That I'll talk for. That I'll talk for. Guys. But Bowen is not a bad team. They show some interesting soccer this year. What happened? I think, I think last year just, um, it was like the kettle boiling. What has it been, guys? Four or five weeks that they've been subpar. Maybe two months, three months. And, and Petkovic, Petkovic came out and said, you will see the real Lazio this week. My team is pumped. And hell, la madonna, did we see the real Lazio. Yes, it's Bologna. You know, Bologna is not a bad team. Don't get me wrong. They still have key players. But this was all Lazio. All Lazio closer with five goals. And But we kept on talking about he, it. He had, had three at halftime. Yeah. And I thought that maybe they were going to take him out for an ovation at the Olympico. But then he got a fourth. And then he got a fifth. But I'd like to just point out of how classy this guy is, even when I, when he scores his fifth goal. No running, taking off his shirt, no uh, jumping on top of the publicity and saying, look at me, look at me. He turns and he looks to the guy who gave him the pass to put it in the net. It's refreshing to see a guy with that exactly. kind of attitude. Uh, he's old school. He's old school. He's old school. He's closest, uh, closest right now is age perfect for, for Serie A, uh, but uh, Lazio, I, I think we could all agree, guys, too little, too late. They should have, yeah. We should have seen this kind of Lazio uh, where they used to take their dip after the uh, winter break. Now they waited about a month, a month and a half off. And, and but there was a major, major dip. Major there was a major dip and it would have been refreshing to see Lazio in there for you know, the top five spots. But No, talking about good. dips and somebody that's been at the bottom of the barrel. Yes. This sums up Intet this year. This is my buddy the Froggy. Or what was, was name? What you was his name before? What was his name before? Milito. I named him. Where, where's Wesley the Bear? Didn't you have Wesley the Bear? Yeah, somewhere? he's in the bedroom. Oh, right, Wesley's in the bedroom. Anyways, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. Now, Napoli wins 3 1. Inter got a penalty shot. I would yeah. like you to explain. I would like you to explain to the camera yeah. what went on in here when you saw Alvarez. Like, did you see how confused no, I thought it was a mistake. Honestly, I thought it was a mistake. Because then after people were still talking, I go, no, maybe they're going to cancel this. Yeah. Guys, it took Inter 23 games to get a penalty shot. Finally, we got one. And then you got all, and then he was like on Twitter, he's like, oh my God, I can't believe. And our friend Dan Nixon posts, you know, it does that mean that Kleenex will not be sponsoring uh, the, the account anymore? And as soon as he said that, right away, <laughs> Guys, I just want to say, now, please. yes, one little story, Eat has been, been getting injured, they're not lucky, whatever. But, Stramaccioni has not been helping himself. No, he's not helping himself. What are you doing with a back three? Napoli must have been laughing, because every time they were going on the counter with speed, they were dangerous and they were getting a chance. Like, just consolidate that, just clog the whole thing, go for the draw and that's it. It's, at this point, Stramaccioni has one advantage for it's me. Okay, it's okay, Stramac, it's okay. It's, uh, you have the advantage, Stramac, to, to do as you wish. Because right now, it can't get any worse. I think we all agree. We were discussing before in all kind of management, will it be in, in the restaurant business like I have or in the hospital or see where he, where he works. In management, you need to adapt the your, your, your team to the situation that you have, not 
this is what I have in management. Yes, that's what it is. This is what I have. This is what I've been given. Adapt yourself. Don't say, this is my formation, and whoever's here, we're going to do this. You need to adapt yourself. Come up with something adapt else. Adapt to what you have. Adapt to what you have. You know you have all these injured players. So, yes, a back four, especially at home against Nap uh, in Napoli. Sorry, uh, Steve. Uh, to me, but Stamachoni will not get blamed because I think all the injuries this year... It wouldn't do justice to, to fire Strama. Yes, we made, we made fun of him all year, but he doesn't deserve to be fired. I think he deserves to have another chance, maybe a couple of months in. Into That's the a problem. It's hard to judge what's been going on. Definitely. But uh, we'll go to Champions League talk. talk. Uh, we won't debate every game. We'll just go overall impression. I just want to talk about, guys, Barcelona that got crushed again at home against Bayern Munich. I'm just happy that happened to Barca. For all the times they've done it to other teams, they got it done on the biggest stage possible, semi-final of the Champions League. At home. At home. And everybody thought the Barcelona was, we all have to copy that style, this is the future of soccer. No, no, it doesn't work like that. They're a fantastic generation that provided great, fantastic soccer, possibly debatable, one of the greatest teams in history. Very debatable, yeah. But don't act like you're up, you're up there and you're better than everybody. You got it. Put it in your face, let me tell you. And now, Barcelona, all of a sudden, it's a rebuilding... They're in rebuilding mode, guys. Well, some, some players are saying they're in a rebuilding mode. Other players are saying don't panic and make too much changes. So I don't even know where they think that... I think they just got shocked. They got shocked and they noticed that some of their youth that they thought, like Iniesta and Xavi who came up, and were able to be plugged into this formation so easily it was going to be the exact same thing as bringing up uh, yeah, Masaya that would produce Tom Adriano and uh, some and uh, uh, Bertrand, Bertrand Teo it takes long, Montoya. long long time to implement those players and those players have to be psychologically prepared for the games and Barcelona winning all these games I think they were just a little bit too much too confident and. They got brought back, uh, brought back down to earth by the Germans. One word, one word answer. If you are the head of Barcelona, do you revamp or you don't stress and stick to the plan? What's your choice? It, 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 it's do, you choice do you try to change the team or do you go? Let's I gotta spend money. Obviously, Spanish football it doesn't count. It doesn't count compared to any league. Barcelona and Real Madrid have a blank check to buy any player that they want. Enough. The only reason why they don't get those players is because the other blind checks from Manchester City and PSG steal them away from them. But we have been proven in the last couple of years that buying players at <coughs> Real Madrid doesn't work. You cannot buy championships. I'm sorry guys, maybe Manchester City said last year. We thought that uh, Barca were bragging, yeah, we're producing players, producing players. Yeah, they won't rebuild this team through their youth. They have to spend money. They're not probably trying to buy Neymar yeah. and so on. Yes, they will have to buy. Yes, I, I get what you're saying. So, so you need to spend money also. You will need yeah. to spend they money. They spent money and obviously they didn't spend it at the right places because Sanchez doesn't do much. They didn't fit in. Fabregas. Uh, Fabregas doesn't fit in. Alex and Song. Fabregas doesn't fit in Song. on almost any team. Alex Song. All these players cost money and did not bring them anything. So there's a big, uh, a big uh, look in the mirror for Barcelona. In the end, it's not. There's one style to copy. Everybody should play their style. It's what suits you. It's not what make, makes the yourself. beauty of That's soccer. It. Adapt yourself to what you got there. So we'll see what Barcelona does in the soccer. Quickly, uh, Real Madrid, 1-2-0. If they would have scored those early chances, it could have made it a different game. But also, Borussia Dortmund had a lot of chances to put this thing away in the second half. Okay, in the end, is Mourinho to blame in all of this? I don't think he's, he's, he's to blame. I and he's know. leaving, by the way, going to Chelsea, apparently. Yeah, that's almost 100% uh, for sure yeah. that he's gone. You knew that he, he was wanted to go to a place. He tried this uh, Spanish adventure. Uh, they purchased the players that he, wanted to, uh, that he wanted to have on his team. Unfortunately, during those years, there was a Barcelona team that was very good. And he was able to be successful in a way, but... He was looked at, and he no, he he does this often. He becomes a scapegoat for players who underperform. Yeah, but wait, what he we does. failed to man mention is that he built this team, but not this is not a Real Madrid team. This is a Mourinho team, very physical, speed. Uh, they're all about counter countering attack. Uh, 
Mourinho does not fit, just like Allegri and Milan does not fit their DNA, Mourinho did not fit Madrid's DNA. Chelsea, Chelsea, uh, sorry, Real Madrid had those couple of years with Mourinho. Mourinho had to, I think the, the, the main goal for hiring him was like the Gemma to, to get that 10th Champions League. And uh, unless a miracle happens, yeah, I don't see him at Real Madrid uh, next thing in the special line. I think he's going to go back to where he fits more in the English league. So. There's obviously a, a chemistry a malfunction between him and uh, Iker Casillas, the best goaler in the world. That's playing with fire. But I think Mourinho, Mourinho's, um, everywhere he's been, he's always been the top guy. And you know what, it's all about Mourinho. Wait. But I think in Real Madrid, it cannot always be about you, nah, Mourinho. This, this was above his head. It's above Chelsea, his head. Who was Chelsea really before Abramovich and Mourinho showed Nobody, up? Nobody, yeah. So, yes, it's a big club, but still, it's Inter. Yeah, you're at Real Madrid. This club is bigger than anything. bigger than everybody, and uh, I think I think you were trying to be bigger than the club, but unfortunately, it didn't work. And we'll wish him luck in this uh, next adventure, a special one. Ancelotti to Madrid. That's what I want. You think so? I would love it. Ancel, I love Ancelotti. He's a fantastic. I would love to see him in Madrid. Carletto, I think I th of all probabilities, I would see him more than anybody else. Yeah. Good. Uh, we'll talk about a few rumors. There's a lot happening. There's a lot of talk. Uh, first of all, guys, Ilicic from Palermo to Roma. Guys, what I don't understand is this is exactly the type of player Roma's been buying for the past five, six years. Who's he? Yes, they're borderline stars, but they're not there yet. This is not a player that will change Roma's stature. Ilicic is a typical once-a-week player. That was really and if Roma want to advance and continue to build their team, they need guys who can sub in for guys like De Rossi and give them some rest. Uh, guys who could give uh, Lamel and Totti a break. But a guy like Ilicic, he's so one-dimensional, almost lazy. And he yes, has class, he's, skills. He, he play, yeah. See, he's got skills. He's, he's played well, but he's he's played played to the next level. level. To the next level. Come on, guys. He will be your guy. He will be your guy to 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 go into the Serie A with, and you know, if you're champions Europa League, you would have. Guys, to if he was else. that good, he would have left Palermo a long time ago. I think this is the time he will leave. He's a good. We player. just know where. Yeah, exactly. Now let's talk about the top player for you, Vic. Il top player. Iguain has been thrown in the rumor pack. Do you think Iguain is the top player for you, Vic? Well, How many Iguain fans I have to admit? I, I have to put more credibility to Iguain going to Juventus than what we heard last year. Who did we have last year? We had Van Persie going to Juventus. Well, no, well we ended had, up being almost true. No. That's yeah. no way. Last, time, last year, the, all the top names in soccer were going to we're Juventus. We've been brought back down to Now work. we have Alexis Sanchez and Robin going into Juventus. Iguain, I think he's been out of the limelight for maybe a year or two. Uh, I think it would be a perfect fit. Uh, I think so too. You're right. I, I think what maybe as a Lorient, I don't think as two strikers at the same time, maybe as a lone striker, I believe he can make some damage. <clears throat> and Iguain, when he was performing at his best, guys, it was when he was playing every game with, with Madrid. So, guys, but honestly, Iguain has been playing with the top players for the past 10 years. He's going to go to a Juve, mm -hmm. and he's going to go to a league which is going to be far too physical for him. It's going to be far too tactical for him, and he's going to be in top flop. Nah, he's a guy who would scale, he has a lot of movement I, in I this game. I think it would work, I think it would work. We're two, two against one, I think it would work. I don't think that's the play. Better right. than Bender and Alka. Another rumor, out of Juventus, and apparently, Marquisio, which is a symbol of Juve today, to Manchester United. But, okay, now you're saying Marquisio will never leave. We're talking about... 30, between 30 and 35 million euros at that price if, if you <coughs> Ferguson comes knocking and says Vidal or Marquisio at that price guys now especially that Pogba and they think he could fit in that role and they have a hard time playing everybody together do you sell Marquisio? you're asking who would we sell Marquisio or Vidal? who would you sell? Vidal Vidal for that kind of money because Marquisio is more of your if you want to build on something I'll have Del Piero at the you know, last 15 years, I think Marquis is the one to, to stay because Marquisio, I believe, has a bit more flexibility uh, formation-wise on the on the pitch than Vidal. No? Maybe because I don't like Vidal. Uh, I don't like this it. is a red card weekly, and ah. because we're Italian, we choose Marquisio. Anybody in the world chooses Vidal. More aggressive, more versatile, more of a head for the net. Possibly younger, we don't know the age yet. 
Guys, Vidal is not a pushover. They stole him away from Bayern Leverkusen. Yeah, but I still that think that was worth $30 million. If and they if got Marquise offered worth the $30 million? No, not even. I, I prefer Marquise to Vidal. If, if, if they were true that they offered... It's going to be harder to replace Marquise and Vidal. Bayern Munich offered $45 million Marquise to Vidal. for the past couple of months hasn't been playing well. They don't seem to have lost... But he hasn't been playing well because he hasn't been playing in this position that he should be playing. But that's Toupé's fault. Guys, Toupé. quickly, because we only have five minutes. There's Modric to Inter. 30, 35 million euros, same price. This and we won't debate if yes, he's going to Inter. You think Inter has the money to go spend on the play? All of a sudden, this year, have the money. We have the Silvio way, 12 easy payments over the span of a year, and then you opt for another easy payments, it could probably If you tell me, yes, I want Modric at Inter, do I believe that we have the money? No. no. This is another bunch of teams that are lined up to get this guy, and they're going to pay more money. Yeah. This is like giving a uh, less fortunate family a zucchini. Come on, take the zucchini. No, oh. you're not getting the zucchini. <laughs> this is my zucchini. Guys, Inter has no money. How are they gonna how are they gonna pry away Modric from Real Madrid? Okay, Real wait. Madrid is too much of a proud club to say that they bought this guy and then they let him go. The, the, the. Okay, I think we determined Modric is not going we to. We understand, play. yes. Before we quickly get, we're getting into a red cards of the week now. No, I just wanna say Cavani, Napoli was offered Zeko plus 40 million. It's not a debate, it's a yes or no answer. Do you take the deal if you're Napoli or no? 40 million Zeko for uh, Cavani. No, because Zeko can't score like Cavani. Yes, do it right away. Because no, no, no. 40 million Zeko in Zeko in Serie A is going to score 63 goals a season. Oh, oh, yo, tell, yes. the, tell the Sheiks to go in the piggy bank. We want more money. In that guys, bank. red cards of the week. I'll start with mine. More the red cards oh, uh, to the Serie A like Guys, thank you very much for having us on the show uh, last week. We really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, once again, Toronto FC sucks. Six, nothing. Six, nothing. Go home and keep losing your games in the last minutes of the games. Thanks a lot. We love you guys, and we're formally inviting you. Whenever you come to Montreal, we'll take care of you. Red cards of the week. Shoot, let's go. You're offering your drinks at the bar. I'm offering drinks at right. the bar. <laughs> Red card, Steve. Okay. Europe, European champion and uh, the, the European Championship and the Confederations Cup. Under 21 European Championship. Yeah, under 21 European Championships, obviously, Francis, we know. <laughs> and the Confederations Cup in Brazil overlap each other. How do you want these teams to build on you if all their best players need to go to this European Championship? They couldn't call each other. Hey, hello. hello. <laughs> hey, set. Oui, c'est moi. C'est Platini. Quand est-ce que tu veux faire le, le tournoi, là? Come on! <laughs> Guys, my red card goes to all the Juventus players. Buffon, Pirlo, everybody all of a sudden saying, Conte is the greatest coach I ever played for. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they only played for Leaky. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm so sure just thinking. <laughs> Are you kidding me or what? Time out. Maybe he's a great player motivator, great player's coach. We don't know because that goes on behind the scenes. But a tactical coach. Keep on playing that 3 5 one, one. Yeah. Keep it up, Conte. And uh, my red card of the week goes to. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do Ryan right International. I'm gonna keep that other red card for another time. Okay, for another time. For us Canadians that we're stuck in this third world country because soccer, God forbid, be in sports, they could get you know signed here. We gotta watch Serie A in, on Ryan right International. Can you guys do us all a favor and sync your freaking audio to your video? Did Seriously? you say that already? You're still no, complaining about that. No, I didn't say that. I'm complaining. The guy kicks the ball, then you hear it through the video. The guy Boom. scores, then you hear it. Boom. Hey, que gol, madonna, que gol. And then the guy's calling Robinho, he's calling him Santana, Santana's calling him. I can't take it anymore. Sync your audio on your video, Rai Internacional. If not, give us BN Sports. Bash. Thank you for watching and congratulations to you, Even if it is. Yes, congratulations. congratulations. All right. Ciao, see you next week.